him a lot more on this one than I did on the previous track. And this one, I just felt him. He was strong. Future went in. I like it. Nigga was so fucking finesse with it. Smooth. Didn't really have to go too hard with it. But I like it. He came in and did his thing. Sway Lee. I like Sway Lee. To me, I feel like a lot of people are jacking his style ever since he and his brother came up. It is what it is. That's just my opinion. Ever since he started singing the way he did, you got all these little niggas starting to try to do the same shit, and that shit became a huge industry trend. It, either way, uh, this is essentially, you know what I mean, the Blase sequel minus Slimmy Jimmy. You know what I mean? Uh, crazy. But think about it that way. Yeah. I like the way these guys work. To me, it'd be funny if Ty Dolla Sign future and let's just say backwards eardrummers <laughs> Ray Schmerd gets together and make a collab project I mean I don't know man to me it's it would be interesting cuz like all three of them have different styles and them working off each other I don't know it'd be like three's companies kind of shit you know what I mean so fuck it three unique personalities technically four if you count the duo of Slimmy Jimmy and Sway Lee but either way this shit was fire. That's all I can tell you. Um, that being said, there's still some good heats on this album. So we're going to get into it. But I think that's probably the biggest thing that's not, that knocked me out. I'll get into it in the final um, final thoughts. But let's get into it. Track number eight, Dawson's Break featuring Jeremiah. Yeah, <laughs> production right here um you might be a little too young if you don't remember this show but there was a show called dawson's creek i always saw that shit and i always thought that shit was hilarious to me um as a kid to me from and maybe i could be wrong but i think highly probable that's where he got the title dawson's Creek from from that famous drama television show but either way uh 
interesting beat by Michael made it definitely heavy on the perks you know what I mean uh, <laughs> no feature on this motherfucker but definitely was going crazy with that shit uh, I like it to me it was an interesting beat I like it and uh, the remix version featuring ASAP Rocky hmm I think I might like Rocky a little more than I like Jeremiah that's just me I've never been a big fan of Jeremiah in the first place, so you gotta excuse me. To me, he just felt, I don't know. Just, I don't know, that's just me. I just didn't feel that, man. I never, I've never really been interested into Jeremiah and his music. But, definitely Dawson's Break. I felt that motherfucking shit. Uh, but, that being said, I didn't know he produced that. Track number nine, Don't Sleep On Me, featuring Future and 24 Hours. I had no idea Southside was here making this track. That explains why the 808 goes in. But then again, it felt very toned down, and that's because Sam Jake Wan was on that motherfucker. As well as Sam Wish, Dean, Apex Martin. Jake Wan made my favorite fucking J. Cole beat of all time. You don't, I don't even have to tell you the name of the song. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to go check out yours truly. End of discussion. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Jake One. No, for real. My favorite beat that J. Cole ever hopped on. God dang. That wasn't made by J. Cole. Hands down. <laughs> All right. Let's get it. Don't sleep on me. Don't sleep on me. Stop sleeping. Stop sleeping. Stop sleeping. No, no, no. Don't sleep on me. Stop sleeping. Stop sleeping. Stop sleeping. Don't sleep on me. Don't sleep on me. Don't sleep on me. Did I say yours truly? I meant to say truly yours. That's what I meant to say, man. Oh my God, bro. That motherfucker better be on there. What? Oh, so it wasn't on true. I think it was a Lucy then. Fuck it. Truly yours too. That's what it was. That's where it's at. I'll never forget that beat. Jake one, you the Don't sleep on me. Don't sleep on me. Got my peace on me. Then you know I'm crazy. Crazy over you. Out my mind. Ain't no telling when I'm good. Tell me about me. That promise I ain't what you know. Stay silent even when I got my money up. I'm in my way for me and a bit with charge. Got you, 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 got you,
track I was really enjoying everything from the beginning going into Ty Dolla Sign's part until he stopped after Ty Dolla Sign everything else was messed up and actually in between from Ty Dolla Sign's first verse to the last 20 seconds where he comes in does his little thing everything in is a mess to, to me I don't like the beat switch change on 24 hours um, part to me I kind of was like, maybe you should have swapped Future in 24 hours, because I like how 24 hours was coming in, he had the energy, I don't like the beat change, it fucked up the tempo, everything kind of went off, I don't like that, I felt like if he was to have that same beat coming through on his verse, I think his part would sound a lot better, so to me, I ain't gonna really knock 24 hours, you know what I mean, came in, was pretty much, you know, did his thing, kept it solid. I just don't like the beat change. To me, it kind of threw everything off. It threw a fucking wrench into the whole song. Also, Future, at the beginning, it made me question whether he was the right feature choice for this because he was definitely off tempo. It just, it don't feel like he should have been on this track. I know Southside, whenever he comes with a banger, absolutely, Future's not a bad idea. Like, Violent, oh my God. Don't make me think about that song again. That shit. Woo! Let me get a couple pre-workout. Let me go and get to the bench presses, my nigga. That's it. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to get violent with that motherfucker. <laughs> don't test me. Um, but either way, uh, I just, I don't know. I don't feel like the future choices was strong here. You know what I mean? In general. Now, I don't mind 24 hours. I think, like I said, if he had his beat normal like it wasn't any no fancy switch up or nothing whatsoever i think i like this part but i find this interesting is that i felt like if there was a way to go with more star power on here i definitely wish i could have seen chris brown i wish i could have seen trey songs hell i think if he was healthy at the time and he was actually available to record with i would definitely would have loved to see an august alcina collab that's what i'm like I really wish you could just work with the best of the best on one album, specifically, like, Strictly Dog. Don't worry about everybody else. Fuck it. Just get on the fucking album. If you're going to do, like, a feature in Ty Dolla Sign shit, let me see you get with the best of the best. I want to see you do a track with Chris Brown. I want to see you do a track with Trey Songs. One track with Tory Lanez. One track with Jack Weez. Uh, August Alsina. Fuck it. Rihanna. Fuck it. Uh, damn. Like, just nothing but just A-list R&B artists, man. It'd be interesting. Fucking, I'm forgetting a few more, too. The Weeknd. I mean, damn. Uh, I'm lost. 
It's like I forgot Bryson Tiller. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Let's just see where all these, like the best of the best that we all listen to get together on somebody's album. I feel like if there's anyone that can pull that off, Ty Dolla Sign can. I really believe that and it would be one of the best albums you'll ever hear in your fucking life. And that's because if Ty Dolla Sign himself and his crew are the main executive producers and watch over and oversee everything on the production and y'all work closely with the motherfuckers that will help out and make that 50-50 bridge work with all these collabs? Absolutely. To me, it's possible. Now, could it take a little longer? A little more time? Yeah. And I'm pretty sure the suit and tie motherfuckers ain't got time for that. You know, so they're going to come in and fuck up the process, the art, and they're going to really ruin it. But I think maybe during a time when Ty Dolla Sign can be free and he's independent, absolutely. Maybe he, I believe that would be a great time for him to come and work with all these A-listers. Really, these all people that I think that he's on the same class with. That's just how I feel. I just feel like there was just, a, you know, while he got a lot, he got a good number of features on it, like a packed number of them. To me, I felt like there was a couple more big names that I felt was missed out from this project that I think would have made this record stand out even more. And to me, it's like Beach House 3. When I put it up against Beach House 2 and Beach House 1 and EP, do I feel like it lives up to the standards that those previous releases created? I don't think so necessarily. Because a lot of these are mainstream-based joints that just feel a bit off of that Beach House mentality. The closest you get with that shit is fucking X. That shit, anything that's laid back with guitars, violins, absolutely. That's Ty Dolla Sign's, um, you know, home base. So, but one, there is one more big name on here that I like that he got as a feature. And once again, anytime I see Ty Dolla Sign and Skrillex work together, it's always something crazy, man something crazy going on you know what i mean anyways we're gonna go ahead and move on to track number 10 stay featuring pharrell williams and um wiz khalifa <laughs> Shit, 
ass on that high. Sit fly, I'm not fly, so I understand why. Seeing things isn't a good enough excuse when you are just sitting right there. The song, uh, I feel 50 50, man. There's some parts I like, some parts I don't like. To me, this is a track that I kind of, I don't know, man. I just fall asleep on. Simple as that. To me, the most interesting part is the last 39 seconds that I'm about to play right now, where you get the violin and it gets everything in. But I'm just saying, you could tell that they're just limiting their. You know they're what, what <laughs> they're limiting their lyrics to just specifically you know, whatever it just sounds hot or whatever. To me, like I said, I've heard I've heard a lot better verses from Wiz, where Wiz comes in and he gets you on a fucking story mode or whatever. You know what I mean? You rolling with him. Um, to me, it's just like you're just running into a bunch of dead ends here and there. Uh, Ty Dolla Sign. I mean, he was coming in strong. When he was singing like, on that, right before his verse ended, I was like, okay, I'm starting to feel him a little bit. But the first part definitely had me asleep. I'm like, I'm not sure. Uh, so usually the most part that I'm really most aware of is Pharrell on the hook. And that's about it. <laughs> that and this part right here. Excuse right. when you are just sitting right there. one of the best producers back in the 2000s man he made some of my favorite joints man when he was part of the neptunes and all that he was hitting it i just don't think that he transferred very well into the 2010s a lot of his songs sometimes can feel just a bit i mean it's it feels like a pharrell track but it just don't feel like i don't know man that's just me some people might be like top, but to me, it just it ain't clicking. I ain't feeling it. So, yeah, this song right here, you know what I mean? There might be a day where I'll just rock with it, but, I mean, 9 out of 10 times, I'm skipping this song. It is what it is. Especially when I get to track number 11, Famous Friend, produced by Royo D. Mile. Dean Johnson's Skrillex ties all the sign, which leads into as a transition to track number 12. So Am I, featuring Damian Marley and Skrillex, produced by Skrillex, Pooh Bear, C Rota, and Habstracks. So let's get it.
like this though. listening to ego death and recapping so am i i'm like ty dollar sign skrillex collaboration record needs to happen all right give that give that to atlantic at the end of the day atlantic, atlantic's gonna realize who skrillex is and they're not gonna knock you i think the two of you can really make some dope joints together i mean it shows every time you guys haven't missed so maybe a short EP, you know, keep it short and sweet so you don't put too much pressure on yourselves. But to me, a short eight, nine track EP where Ty Dolla Sign and Skrillex work together, create different types of sounds. I believe Skrillex has it in him. I think definitely that could be a possibility. You can hit so many different genres at the same time. And then, uh, ooh, likely coming Thursday morning, I'll be looking into that. Um, but either way, though, I'm just saying, like, damn, I lost my thought. But I'm just saying, you know how Skrillex has different ways of 
making different types of productions, I feel like it really complements Ty Dolla Sign. I think it's a possibility that, yeah, they definitely could make a poppin' EP that really gets everyone fucking with it. Um, so I think it could be a win-win situation for everybody. Uh, but anyways, let me double check real quick one more thing. To me, this is uh, a hit. And yeah, rightfully so, it's the second single from this album. Um, alongside X and Pineapple as two other singles. To me, this is definitely the big hit right here. Uh, as far as how it charted, yeah, a very chill island radio hit. Yeah, I felt the same way too. That's weird. It only charted on New Zealand? Hmm. 